it is finally time to calibrate our display and create a 3D LUT file that we can use in Resolve. Man, like getting going with color grading is kind of crazy. I never knew this when I first started out as a filmmaker. So wh what are we doing here? Well, monitors are calibrated to a D65 white point. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a colorometer, the Display Pro HL, and we're gonna use a software software called Display Cal that also works with an engine, and I'm gonna mispronounce a bit, it looks like Argyle, Argyle CMS. And they work together, they're free, they're maintained by people just because they love it, so donations help them. But we're gonna use that software because it can create a 3D LUT file that we can use in Resolve or on a LUT box, which I cover the LUT box stuff in a different lesson. So what's different with Display Cal versus Calibrite Profiler that comes with these colorometers? Well, the software that comes with these can only create ICC profiles used in an operating system. That's not what we're doing and not even necessarily what we want to do. We want to hook up to Blackmagic Design hardware and bypass the GPU. But to do that, we have to use a LUT and Profiler can't create LUTs, okay? So DisplayCal can. It's free, but it's, it sometimes can be buggy. We're going to talk about that in a second. The options are Calman Studios, which is $2,000 software. So that's out of a lot of our budgets. And then, or just buying a hardware calibrated display, which costs more money, and you pay someone periodically to come in and calibrate it, and that costs money. So my goal with this lesson is to have a solution where we can get as close to grading accuracy as possible for our independent film projects that doesn't break the bank account, okay? Now, a couple notes before we jump in. Number one, at the very beginning of this, we, I show you how to install Calibrite Profiler because I run into an issue where the colorometer would not unlock when I tried to use Display Cal. And if I installed a Calibrite Profiler and kicked off a scan and then just stopped the scan, it unlocked my colorometer and the Display Cal worked. I don't think that's happening anymore with this Display Pro HL, but if you run into that, this will fix it. And then point two, I just found out last night that Display Cal is not opening on Mac OS Sonoma. And Sonoma ships with the M2 and M3 Macs, or any new Mac now. I have an M1 Mac and I'm still on Monterey, so it's working for me. So this is kind of a big deal. There's a developer that's forked a version of DisplayCal that runs on Python 3 that might run on Sonoma if the developers got DisplayCal working correctly. The last time I looked at it, it was kind of, kind of I don't want to say buggy, but just hard to get working. So I'm going to check into that. If that's a viable option, I'll do another lesson on that. But worst case scenario, here's what you can do. Remember, we're running, we're creating a 3D LUT file to be used with Blackmagic Design hardware and bypass the GPU, okay? So if you can even borrow another Mac that doesn't have Sonoma and just throw Resolve on, get your Blackmagic hardware going, I know this, this is a lot, but you can create a 3D LUT file with DisplayCal and then that 3D LUT file can be used with your computer because we're bypassing the computer anyway, we're using Blackmagic Design hardware, okay? So keep that in mind as a workaround. So with all of that, without further ado, let's jump in and learn how to calibrate our display and create a 3D LUT file that we can use in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, like I said, we're gonna download the Calibrite Profiler first and get that installed. If you wanna skip this part, go to about five minutes and 40 seconds in on this timeline and that will take you to the Display Cal portion. So first go to Calibrite.com and then Software, Software Downloads. So scroll down on the Software Downloads page and I'm gonna click Download for Mac and just save the file. Now I'm gonna to go to Finder, to that folder, and here it is, Calibrite Profiler.dmg. Double click on that file, and then you should see this screen. Just click and drag this to your Applications folder. And there it is. Now before we open it, we need to make sure our Display Pro HL is hooked up to our computer. So just plug that into a USB-C port, and now we can open the Calibrite Profiler. The first time you open it, it's gonna prompt you like this. Just click Open. Okay, here we go. Now before I forget, let's go back to Finder and that .dmg file that we double clicked on, we don't need that anymore, so just drag it to your trash. Okay, back in the Calibrite Profiler. We have to kick off a scan so it unlocks our device. And there's a lot of settings if we were actually creating an ICC profile that I would walk you through, but those don't interest us right now. So on the bottom under device, you should see your device highlighted. That means the application sees it. For profile my, I'm gonna leave it a monitor, basic, click next. I'm gonna select my external display, click next again. Click start measurement. So it wants us to place the calibrator on this circle. So you'll see your Display Pro HL has a counterweight, and if you push it down here, you can slide it up and down the cord. And you just need to rotate the screen cover off of the lens and put that lens flush against your display. Have it positioned in the circle, and then click Next. 
Again, ignore what it's saying here, just click Next again. And there we go, the measurement should start. Just click Stop Measurement Process. Okay, that should have unlocked your device. And I'm leaving Calbright Profiler open, by the way, because I'm not sure if I close it, if it will lock the device or not. So I'll just leave that open, actually minimize it. Now we need to download and install DisplayCal and it's displaycal.net. Now before we download and install this, what is DisplayCal? Well, it's similar to Calibrite Profiler in that it can create ICC profiles after you calibrate a display with a colorometer. However, it's different in that it lets you create a 3D LUT file, which is what we need to do with our Blackmagic Design hardware and load that 3D LUT file into DaVinci Resolve. DisplayCal is free. It was created and kept up to date by a guy named Florian, I think is his name. And it uses an engine, as you can see here, display calibration and characterization powered by Argyle CMS. And I'm probably not even pronouncing this correctly, but its website is right here. And here's the author of this last updated December of 2023. So it sounds like it's pretty old because we're well into 2024, but this will still work. And these guys both have links on their websites for donations, and I highly recommend if you can spare even five bucks, send it to them because the alternative to this software is something like Calman Studio, which costs $2,000. So I'm so grateful that this software exists. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna download and install this, and when we open it the first time, it's gonna prompt to download these files, okay? So let's do this. Click Get Display Cal, and then choose your operating system. Click Installer Package, and it's gonna take us to SourceForge, which is normal, and it should auto-download in just a second. There we go. Save that file. I'm gonna close my browser, go to Finder, here's Display Cal, double click. It says it can't be opened. So what I need to do is click OK, go to System Preferences or System Settings, Security and Privacy. Now click the lock to unlock it, use password. Cool, now on the General tab, here, allow apps downloaded from, click open anyway by DisplayCal, and click open again. Okay, click continue, continue, agree, install. Cool, now go to applications. You should see a DisplayCal folder, click on that, and then click DisplayCal. The first time you open DisplayCal, it's gonna prompt you that the Argyle CMS color engine isn't installed. So go ahead and click download, click download again, and there we go. Now if we go to the question mark in the top and go to about, you'll see the version here. And this version needs to correspond with the latest version on their website. So if you just click this, it'll go to their site. And if you scroll down, you'll see it dead center here, current version, all right? If you don't have the latest version, or if it failed in the download when you first opened DisplayCal, here's what you need to do. Scroll down and look on the left. Here's download links for the latest version. So I'm gonna click on Apple OS X. Now I'm gonna get the latest one, which is noted here, it will run on the Apple Silicon Mac. So if you bought a new Mac with the right and direct training, you definitely want this. And go ahead and download that file. Now what we need to do is go to Finder where you downloaded that file. And let me warn you, the next steps are a little crazy, but just do exactly what I'd say and it will work fine for you. We need to open up a new Finder window. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this file and place it in the DisplayCal folder in a certain spot. So over here on this new window, click Go, Computer, then double click on your hard drive, Users, your username folder. I'm gonna change this to List. Okay, we need to double click on Library, and if you don't see Library, because by default it's hidden, just go to View, down to Show View Options, and make sure Show Library Folder is checked. Open that, go to Application Support, Display Cal, DL. And here we go, goodness, right? So you can see the current folder for the version that you have. So what we wanna do is grab this new version and drag it over and then double click on it. Now here's the thing, your Mac is not gonna like this folder that we just downloaded from the internet. If we try to use this in DisplayCal, it's gonna throw all kinds of errors. So what we need to do is we need to tell your Mac, hey, ignore this folder, it's okay, don't worry about it. And so to do that, we gotta get a little techie here. Here's what you have to do, leave these folders open, okay? At least this one, because you're gonna use it in a second. Need you to go to your applications and scroll down to utilities and then click on terminal. And you can resize this just like any other window. I'm gonna make it wider because we're gonna type a long line in here. And I'm gonna type clear and hit enter just to make the screen clutter free. Okay, here's what you've gotta do. You've gotta type in this line right here, sudo space x-a-t-t-r space minus r space minus d space com dot apple dot quarantine. And I'm gonna put another space, all right? And then with that in there, 
go over to your folder here where you unzipped that file, double click on the latest version, grab the bin folder in there, and then drag it over and let it go. And even if it kind of moves crazy on the screen, just that's fine, just let it go. And it should look like that. You can hit the right arrow. And so we should have the line that you typed in and then the path to that bin folder, hit enter. And it's gonna ask you for your password and this is your Mac password that you sign in with. And when you type it, it's not gonna show asterisks or anything, it's just gonna be blank. Hit enter and there we go. If you just see that prompt without any error messages, you did it right. If you did get any error messages, just check the syntax, type that in exactly and then grab that bin folder and drag it over. In fact, let me just do it again. So I'm gonna paste that in. So that's what we want. Drag the bin folder over, hit enter. It didn't ask me for a password again because I just entered it. All right, cool. So to use those back in Display Cal, I'm gonna close my Finder windows and I just go up to Display Cal. Oh, and actually it's doing a little bug here that I can show you, so this is good timing. See how I click on a menu and it won't stay up? So the way around that is click once and then click a second time and hold the button and then quickly access a menu item like that. And there we go. Now that I've done that, the menus work normally. It's weird, but the timing works so you could see it. So now we need to go to Display Cal, locate Argyle CMS executables. And it should default to where they are. If it doesn't, here's the path. Hard drive users, your user folder, library, application support, Display Cal, DL. And then here's the current version it's using. So what you're going to do is go back to DL, look for the new version you just did, double click, go to bin, click open. It'll run through this. And as long as you don't see any errors, you should be good to go. But let's verify that. Let's go to the question mark about in this version here should correspond with their website. Nice. What a process. And by the way, whenever you update Argyle CMS files, you're going to have to do that same procedure. Okay. So just refer back to this if you need to close. Now that that's done, we need to go to the top to tools, detect display devices and instruments. And this is going to communicate with your colorimeter. You've got to do this first. And after the scan, if there's no errors, it should have worked. So now let's go to the top of this window to settings. We want video 3D LUT for Resolve D65, okay? Here we have tabs. The first tab is display and instrument. Display should already be resolved based on what we chose here. Instrument, it's gonna say i1 Display Pro Color Monkey. It's not gonna say our exact model, but this is the same family of device, so that should work fine for you. And by the way, if you click this, it's another way to communicate with your device, make sure it's working with Display Cal. Mode is LCD generic. Leave these unchecked. Override minimum display update delay. You can leave this at 1000 milliseconds to start out and that should work fine. When our calibration completes, there's something I'm going to look at to see if it's over a certain amount on a couple values. And if it's too high, we need to come back here and increase this to like 1100 milliseconds, okay? But for now, leave it there. Skip all this down to output levels. So this is important. We need to set this to full range. This corresponds with what we're doing in DaVinci Resolve. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, didn't we set our Ultra Studio Monitor 3G to limited and our monitor to limited? And yes, we did. But what I've discovered doing this a bunch of times with my setup is that setting it all to full range for the entire pipeline gives me a better calibration scan. So what we're gonna need to do is jump back in Resolve really fast. Then we need to go to Project Settings, Master Settings, down to video monitoring and set your data levels to full. And by the way, earlier I set this to 10 bit. I thought my display was 10 bit, it's actually 8 bit. I'm gonna show you in a second how to look that stuff up if you're unsure. So I'm setting that back to 8 bit and click save. And now we need to go to our monitor. So I'm gonna jump over to my ASUS display, click on menu, then go down to image, input range, and this needs to be set to full. And a little side note, auto will not work. I don't think auto is accurate. You need to set it to exactly what you're doing. So with that set to full range, we need to look at corrections. So what's this about? Well, this has to do with the type of monitor that you're using. I just use this generic spectral LCD white correction file, which is right from my display. Now you might be thinking, how do I know what my display is? So let's go to a website. It's called displayspecifications.com. And I can search for my display, click on it, and it gives me information about my display. So here, Display, it's an IPS WLED, so it's a white LED. And I can also scroll down on this page and see a lot of other information, which is where I can find the bit depth, etc. So it's a handy site to use. Let me go back here. So I know that the white LED will work. Now there's something else just to know, and that is you can look up corrections for your specific display that people have submitted. It's kind of like a, a community. And so there's another website for that, and here it is. 
colorometercorrections.displaycal.net. Again, search for your display. Here's mine. And there's two user submitted things. You do not want to use the CCMX files. You want CCSS. The reason is because these are done with certain hardware that's not necessarily interchangeable. At least that's what I've been told. So if you click on that, you can download it. And on one of my external drives, I have a monitor calibration folder and I have things in here pertaining to all this. So you can just create a folder there, download this file, save. I'm gonna close this. Now back in DisplayCal to use that file, go to Tools, Correction, choose Colorimeter Correction. I'm gonna browse to it, and then just highlight it and click Open, and it'll load it in. And it's gonna change some things here based on that. So I could use this, but I get fine results using the LCD white LED family. So I'm gonna leave it at that, and let's move on to the next tab, Calibration. We want this checked. There's an interactive mode that we're gonna do in a minute. Observers find it the default white point. So we wanna put in the chromaticity coordinates for a D65 white point, which is what our display should be. And these are the correct values, okay? You could also do color temperature. And if you put in 6504, that would be the same thing. But I do the chromaticity coordinates. And then white level, I'm gonna do custom. And here I want to say 100 candelas. This goes back to those SMPTE guidelines for our grading room and stuff like that. And so with that, if you're doing this, you definitely want your grading room ambience dialed in like we talked about. Black level and tone curve as measured. Let's go to profiling. Profile type, XYZ LUT, that's what we want. Leave this unchecked. Profile quality is high. Test chart, for now we're just going to do a small test chart for LUT profiles. The reason we're starting out with small is because back here, with this override, I told you we're gonna check for errors. Well, I don't wanna do a large test chart because it takes a while to do that scan. I wanna do a small one that's fast, and as long as I don't get errors, then I'll come back in here and do another scan with a large or very large test chart. The larger test charts will give you probably more accurate results. Patch sequence should be minimized display response delay. And then profile name, let me blink out what I have here. This is what it'll look like in your computer. And this is really weird. If you try to overwrite this stuff or delete it, it just comes back. So what you need to do is Command-A and then just start typing. Now this is subjective. Whatever you want your 3D LUT file to be called, that's the name you want to put in here. So I start with my display manufacturer, my model. I'm using a white LED corrections file. I'm doing a small chart. My data levels are full range and my display is Rec. 709, okay? Again, this is whatever you want to do. And then I might version it. And then I click this folder to choose where I want to save this information. Then I have display cal settings, profiles. Again, however you want to store this stuff, just keep it accurate. Don't let it save it all over the place on your computer because that causes complications later. Click open on that folder and now we're good. Let's go to the 3D LUT tab. Put a check here, create 3D LUT after profiling. Source color space is Rec. 709, BT709. Tone curve, set this to custom. Gamma should be 2.4, and you want this as relative, not absolute. My monitor is a 1001 contrast ratio, and from what I've read, setting this to custom in a pure gamma 2.4 and relative might give me better results as opposed to the default Rec. 1886. Now, if you had a really nice display with 2001 contrast ratio and stuff like that, you might be able to leave this at 1886 and get better results, but custom is what we're doing here. Black output offset, for my scenario, I'm setting this to 100%. Apply calibration VCGT. This stands for video card gamma table. If we were not hooked up to Blackmagic hardware and our display was using an ICC profile, we wouldn't want this checked because what this is gonna do is gonna take all of the corrections and stick them in the 3D LUT file. And if you did that when you weren't bypassing the GPU and the operating system, then you would kind of double calibrate or double apply some calibration and you, don't, you wouldn't normally wanna do that. But with our 3D LUT and the Blackmagic hardware, you want that checked. This is fine. Rendering intent should be absolute white point scaling. Cube file's good. This is important. We want both of these at full range. 3D LUT resolution. You can leave it at this. I'm gonna set mine to 33 because I'm also using a 3D LUT box, which we're gonna talk about in another lesson, but that LUT box wants this size. And you can use that size for Resolve too. I don't think it'll matter. Okay, cool. Now with all of that set, we are ready to calibrate and profile. So click on that. Now it's gonna give you a couple windows here. The first one I've already said yes to is about disabling black point compensation. You definitely want that disabled. So when you click this, say yes to disabling that on the first prompt and then this prompt, say no to, and now it's waiting for a connection. So we gotta go back to Resolve. You have to be on the color page for this. So Shift-6, Workspace, 
Monitor Calibration, Portraits Display Calman, and enter in the IP address and the port number that we see on the Display Cal window. So the port number is already correct, so we just need to enter the IP address and then click Connect, and it should say Connected. And when you do that, a little measurement window should pop up. Let me move this to a different screen. Okay, so this is kind of weird, but here's how it works. Wherever you position this on your screen, this is where it's gonna put the color swatches for your colorimeter. So I put mine up here on the top left because my monitor menu is down here on the lower right, and we're accessing the monitor menu during this setup. Also, click the plus sign three times or so to make it bigger, and then click Start Measurement. So we just need to put the colorometer on that swatch, and we wanna tilt your display back so that it's nice and flush. And then, of course, make sure the counterweight is on the other side. And once that's done, click Start Measurement. And you can see Resolve is sending color swatches to our grading display. So when it finishes that, you should see a screen like this. So here's what's going on. We told it, hey, we want a D65 white point with target chromaticity coordinates of this. And so what it's saying is, hey, I just looked at your display, ran some color swatches, and your current chromaticity coordinates for D65 white point are this. And it's also gonna say, hey, you wanted 100 candelas, where your current display brightness is 92. So these things are off. So what we want is we want our RGB values to be lined up with each other evenly at these arrows. And then the same goes for the candles. We want it at the arrows. And so what you have to do is you have to go to your display menu and go to RGB values and brightness and start tweaking this stuff. So I'm gonna show you how I do it on my ASUS ProArt. So first I'm going to go to the menu, ProArt palette, brightness, and tweak my brightness to get it in a better range. And so I'm a little over, but I'd rather be a little over than a little under. And we might end up tweaking this again after we do the RGB values. So I'm gonna go back, but stay in the ProArt palette and go to color. Now on color, we're going to be working with both gain and offset. So to get these to line up, I'm not going to crank my green up. I'm going to first start lowering red and blue and see what happens. And we wanna do it in just tiny increments. And so I'm gonna start with gain first, but I'm only gonna move gain by one on red and see what happens. And if I need to remove red a little more, I'm gonna to go to offset and try minus one on offset. These interact with each other, and so you're just gonna to have to go back and forth until you get this worked out. And don't settle. If it's not exactly even here, or you see it drifting back and forth on its own after you've got it set, keep playing with things, including your brightness, and see what you can come up with. So I lowered the red offset by one more, and now it's lined up really well. So just take the time and play with it and get this lined up as best you can, and then click Stop Measurement. And now we're gonna continue on to profiling. So what's going on here, Display Cal is sending this through Resolve over your Blackmagic Design hardware to your grading display. So the scan is complete. If we look at the profile self-check, the average is 0.37, max 1.68, so this is fine. We want the average under .5 and the max under 5. So below that, gamut coverage, gamut volume. We're just going to focus on gamut coverage. 88% sRGB. Remember, sRGB and Rec. 709 have the same 2D chromaticity coordinates on the CIU chromaticity diagram. So just look at this as Rec. 709. 88% seems like we'd want more than that, right? We're gonna talk more about this in the next lesson where I show you how to check settings, run reports, things like that. So for now, let's just save our 3D LUT file. And you wanna put your LUT files with the other DaVinci Resolve LUTs because that's where Resolve looks for them. So here's the path. Your hard drive, library, application support, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, LUT. And then in here I create a display cal folder and then I create folders for my different displays. Now before you click save, if you click up here in the file name and do command right arrow to get to the end of it, DisplayCal puts a bunch of junk at the end of this. I'm gonna back over that to my version number. That's what I wanna see, it's just cleaner. Again, subjective, up to you. Click save, cool. So now let's go ahead and load this into Resolve. If we go back to Resolve, let's disconnect from DisplayCal and close that. Okay, let's go to project settings, color management, and scroll down to lookup tables. The video monitor lookup table is the one we're after. This is what controls the grading display. But before we browse for the LUT file, we've got to update the list. If you click this button, it tells Resolve to look at that LUT folder and rescan it. Okay, I just updated. Now if I click three dots, there's my display cal folder, ASUS, and there's the file. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to apply my 3D LUT and just watch the display and see if you see a difference. And also remember, if you hold Option down your keyboard, when you save in project settings, it leaves you in there. 
you see it change? Cool, right? So now we've applied a 3D LUT file with corrections from my grading display. There's a couple other things we need to check out in projects in your project settings, so jump back in. First, your color viewer lookup table and your scopes lookup table. If these are defaulting to use video monitoring selection, that's gonna tell each of these to use the 3D LUT we just loaded here, and that is not what you want. Your color viewers are here on your main display, and so it's a different display altogether, and your scopes need to be looking at your camera footage, not through the 3D LUT we just loaded here. So, set both of those to no LUT selected, and then we've already set this before, but just to make sure, 3D lookup table interpolation, we want that to tetrahedral. And with that, you can click save. What a process, right? But congratulations, you have a 3D LUT file loaded in Resolve, so now you're looking at a more accurate grading display, all right? Now, a couple notes. I would go back in, your settings are already in Display Cal, and run a scan with more patches, like run a very large scan for LUT files because you might get a more accurate LUT file. And in point two, I've talked about a LUT box, and you can get one for under $200 from Blackmagic, and that feeds off your current Blackmagic hardware. And what we do is we load this 3D LUT file in onto the LUT box instead of into Resolve and that can make it a little more accurate. Hey, if you like this training, you should check out my online film school, Write and Direct, writedirect.co, because I'm a dreamer like you, and I'm a filmmaker, and I did the normal thing. I went to Los Angeles, and I went to film school with all these dreams, and I spent a lot of money, and I learned a lot, but here's the problem, the challenge. When you graduate from film school, you realize that the entertainment industry, that Hollywood doesn't care about your degree. They don't care about your thesis film. They don't care about any of that. What do they care about? They care about what you can do, what you know, what you've done. So if you're an aspiring director, after film school, the only way forward is to begin directing your own films, but it's on your dime. And if you're not prepared for that, it can set you back by years. And so the goal of Write and Direct is to take what I learned in school, of course, but what I've learned since then, working on studio and independent films, I take all that and I teach you the craft in a very hands-on, self-paced way. You learn the craft, but you save a ton of money so that you can buy the gear you need and start making movies much faster than traditional education routes. I highly recommend you check it out. If you have questions, go to my site, writedirect.co. You can use the contact form on the site. Those go directly to me. You can also schedule a call and we can answer questions on the phone. All right, writedirect.co, I hope to see you there. And if not there, I'll see you on the channel very soon.